Right. Good morning again to everybody. This is, a, I believe, not fair that before the service started, when the pastor of the house can speak Afrikaans, but then expects Cape, Cape Townians and Western Capers to speak English. You know, there was a time where we only used English for self-defense, but praise God for His grace and His mercy that's going to help us this morning. I want to greet everybody also on Facebook that is watching us live here from the Holy Spirit Fault Life Ministry in Centurion. Yes, our team has been on the road for on a mission trip for over five uh, five weeks, over a month and month and one week about. And uh, yeah, so we we still on the road. We've been in, and uh, we started in the Western Cape, then we went to the Eastern Cape, then we went to the Free State, and we went to Northwest, and then we came to Gauteng, and then we went to KZN, and now we came back this past week to, to, to Gauteng, and it's a wonderful, wonderful privilege for us to be here. Normally we make, uh, Fadi always tells me that, he, I, he doesn't even invite me. I must know when we're here in Pretoria that I must come. We must come to, to the service. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to introduce my team. Uh, the, uh, the, the NIV give, gives you this heading on top of these verses. The Lord's grace to Paul. I don't want to change anything in the Bible. But just for the today, I want to ask you to, to, to give me your blessing. I just want to change I to us. Is it all right with you? I believe if he said it was for him. I truly believe when Paul, I believe, was in the prison when, this, when he was writing it to Timothy. Um, I believe or where he was that God showed him um, like on this projector on a board on the, on the wall. God, he wrote this uh, to, to his spiritual son Timothy. But I believe that God showed him a team. That's going to come after 2,000 years. A team that's going to walk on this earth and that is also going to testify that the Lord's grace to the Basrak team. Now, Basrak is an Afrikaans word that we used with to say when you overcome something, you have become the boss of that thing. Something that you were the slave of. Let's say for many years, like myself, you've been a slave of alcohol abuse and drug abuse. Now God's grace comes and God gives you the grace to overcome the thing that was reigning over your life, that was ruling your life, that was controlling your life. You've been a slave to this thing for many years and then God's grace comes. It, you don't deserve it. it, 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 it he just gives it, gives it to you. But His grace is enough to overcome this thing that you were the slave of. So... And then God gives you the grace to go and do what he has originally called you to do. So, Paul writes this to Timothy. He says in verse 12, and I want to say this now as, as our team, as the Basra team. We thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has given us strength that he considered us, listen now, trustworthy, appointing us to his service. Other translations will say, into this ministry. Even now, even now, verse 13, even though I was once, or even though we were, were once, blasphemers, persecutors, and violent men, we were shown mercy because we acted in ignorance and unbelief. You must remember, ignorance and unbelief is two of the characters of the kingdom of darkness. Verse 14, the grace of our Lord, Lord was poured out on us abundantly along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Now verse 15 is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible where Paul says, Here is a trustworthy saving that deserves full acceptance. He says you can take this, word, this verse and you can bank it, you can put it in your heart that Jesus Christ... That he says, with full acceptance, Christ Jesus came into the world to save believers of who I, we are the worst or the best. <laughs> now I've changed the Bible. Because that is not what, what, what he said. He said that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Praise God. 
Can we give God a praise? Can we give God? We honor God that Christ Jesus came for one reason to save sinners, of whom we are the worst. The Message Bible says, uh, say, uh, say, we are the we are public sinners number one. When it came to sin, you get sinners, and then you get the basrak team. We say in Afrikaans, ons was morsag. Now, in English, dirty? Is that, is that the word? Messy. Oh, but doesn't sound like Afrikaans. Morsag is morsag. Vol ficht. Yeah, underneath the dustbin. A horrible pit. But for that very reason, we were shown mercy so that in us, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus must display his immense patience, patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Paul writes here in verse 16, he says, Christ saves sinners. He's, he's, got a, a, he's, he's, he's very patient with them. The worst of them. The most messy sinners of all. Christ is patient with them. Why? Because he's going to save them and not to just take them to heaven. He's going to leave them here on earth to be an example to others so that they can receive eternal life. So Christ saved the worst of all, the public sinners, number one, like this team, myself and my team. This is what Jesus do. He, he saves sinners so that other sinners can be saved. Please hide against pride. Never forget where the Lord took you out. The Bible says all of us sin and came short of the glory of God. Amen. So I want to say with the team, and I believe everybody that's sitting here with us, and everybody that's watching and that's going to listen later on the radio, now the King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Praise God. Paul writes to Timothy and he says that God was patient with him. God appointed him in the ministry. I want to honor my father God this morning and praise him and honor him and worship him and adore him and will, I will testify that I'm celebrating this month of October my 20th year in full-time ministry. And there's one word that I can say about being in full-time ministry, especially prison ministry. There's nothing else that I can say except grace. For the last 20 years, God's grace was enough for me, my wife, my children, my ministry team, and a lot came and went, our partners and friends. It was all just grace. And I will continue to witness about the amazing grace of God. We were once lost, but now we are found. We were blind, but now we can see. All the honor to the King of the ages, the King of glory, this wonderful, wonderful God, who is love, whose love conquered my heart more than 20 years back when I was alone in a bedroom one night, full of alcohol, full of drugs, in a lot of trouble. Living the life of a hardened criminal, like Paul was saying to Timothy. Now one day in eternity, me, I believe the team and myself and a lot of other people will sit with Paul and say to him, Paul, there's no way that you could have been a bigger sinner than us. You were maybe a morsach, but we were the morsachster. You thought you were public sinner number one, but there was eight guys before you, in front of you. Only five of us is here this morning, but the other three is at home. They had to go back. But these eight guys can testify. Paul, do you get the dustbin? You get the rubbish on top of the dustbin? And you know that smelly, stinking rubbish on the underneath, rotten. Paul, that's where the law took us out. When I was in May this year, I celebrated my 20th year that Jesus Christ came one night into my bedroom when I was busy dying of an overdose of drugs. And my life, I felt that my life is going to end and I had tremendous fear in my heart to die. Because I said at that time, living as a hardened criminal, living as a gangster, a drug addict, all these things, bad things in life, I said, if you ask me, 
What is your religion? I would have said, Christian. Or maybe, in Gekerk. That's how I was brought up. That what, that's what religion taught me. If you're part of this denomination, or you're part of this organization, and maybe your father or mother serve God, you're okay. We will accept you into our church, and we will, then you will get a license. That's what I thought. We will accept you into our church, and then you will have a license to use communion. So it was actually a drinking license for me. We made fun about that. But we already drank like fishes before we were accepted. They didn't want to accept me when I was in school because they said I was, I was just too naughty. I was morsa. You're not the type that we can accept into this church. But praise God, Christ accepted me. Praise God, when I was down and out in my life, when I was an outcast, mercy came running. When death had wanted to take me that night in that bedroom, and I had all the right to take me because the wages of sin is death. When sin gives birth, it gives birth to death. Living the life that I was living, and, and I want to say this, you can honor God maybe with your lips, a lot of people can do that. But where is your heart? Where does your heart? Who does your heart belong to? The Bible says you can honor God with your lips, but your heart is far from Him. My heart was so far lost. It was almost like the east is from the west, from God. But I said I was a Christian. Hurting people. Robbing people. Cheating people. Abusing people. Abusing women. I came to a place in my life, in my life one night when I discovered I'm going to die now. This is it. The final whistle of my life is going to blow and I need it. Grace. But there's a song that said, when I was guilty and they said you deserve to go to hell, like the song that we sang just before we started, mercy. I was lost. I was almost cast down into hell. But mercy came running. Mercy came running. I went this morning and I wanted to see what is the difference between grace and mercy. And I got this on the internet. In the dictionary, grace is defined as, now I had to go and look on the internet how to pronounce this word. Courteous. Is it right? Courteous. I had to practice this morning. I had to get ladies on the, on the internet to help me. Courteous. Is that the word? Courteous goodwill. Define courteous goodwill. Ah, I can't no say. Meaning it's not asked for nor deserved. But it is freely given. Mercy, on the other hand, is the compassion and kindness. Listen to this. It's the compassion and kindness shown to someone whom it is in one's power to punish or to harm. The Bible says it's the goodness and the kindness of God that brought you. To repentance we as a team can say this we will testify this and continue to, to, to testify it that it was the goodness and the kindness of God that brought us from crime to Christ so now let now, now the, 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 listen to this explanation it's an act meant to relieve someone of their suffering let's put it this way suppose someone attempted to rob you your house you learned that the robber was just in a desperate situation and didn't intend to do any harm at all. Instead of calling the police, you choose to pardon the thief and let the matter go. That's mercy. And the Bible says his mercy is fresh every morning. Because part of mercy is you messed up yesterday with your wife, Freak. Try again today. Be careful with your words. So instead of calling the police, you choose to pardon the thief and let the matter go. That's mercy. Then gave him some food and a few dollars to get him through this trying time. That's grace. Isn't that a beautiful explanation of the difference between grace and mercy? We don't deserve that grace. It's freely given to us because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. But then there's this mercy. When I was busy dying in my bedroom, mercy came running. 
when death had all the right to take me to hell, mercy said no. And God's mercy started to rewrite my life. I can keep you busy for hours and how His mercy is still busy continuing to rewrite my life. I'm not perfect yet. I cannot walk on water yet. But praise the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. I'm not the man that I used to be. That was not a man. That was a mouse. That was a son locked up in a, in a, in a big body that didn't grow up yet. Because the, the day when you can accept the consequences of your choices... And you take responsibility therefore and stop blaming other people. That's the day when you will grow up. So thank God for His grace and His mercy. So yes, I'm celebrating this month, October month, my 20th year in full-time ministry. And it started 20 years back, not for me to go to a Bible school. This is the path that God chose for me. I'm not saying He's choosing it for you. But most of my team... I had an encounter with God like myself in that bedroom where the love of Christ conquered my heart. Under the law, I was guilty. I was cursed under the law. But grace came. And grace became my coach to lay down everything that is ungodly in my life. It was grace. It was the Holy Spirit. After that night, I was about an hour and a half on my knees before God, repenting of my sins. So scared to die. And the love in that bedroom was so amazing that it conquered my heart. Because God is love. What the law couldn't do, grace did. Loved it. That's, that's why when 20 years back when God sent me to Krugersdorp prison, to go and tell an inmate there, a waiting trial who killed two innocent people and, and tried to kill another lady in a bar, set the place on fire. He died last year in, in, cover, in level five or in level four. Uh, he was hit by a train. But God sent me to this guy in Krugersdorp prison and, and he told me, go tell Nikki that I love him. I first rebuked the devil because I thought that was, how can God send me to someone in prison? Prison! It's most a messy place, man. It's an evil place. It's the den of Satan. <laughs> you get people, they teach other people, there's no devil, there's no hell, there's no demons. Please invite them with us. You can ask them, you can give me my, my number to them. I will take them with us to prisons in the Western Cape. <laughs> When they will, they will walk into Paul's small prison and they will say, I have been deceived. There is truly a devil because this is his den. Satan is his breeding ground. Because when you walk into that gate, you start to experience, you feel this is an evil place. This is where the kingdom of darkness reign. There's ignorance. There's death. No vision, no life in that kingdom of darkness, of the kingdom of darkness. And God sent me to this guy in prison to go and tell him that he loves him. Now I always tell people in Afrikaans, my, my name is Freak. It was always Freak Break. Now is it Freak Break. Meaning that I was always a guy who used to break things. And people... And then I got so broken because I hurt other people out of my hurt. And when I got to a place where I was so down and out, so broken, that's where Jesus came my way. And you will hear now from the team where they met Christ, where he came and conquered their hearts. The same Jesus who saved me that night. When I was about an hour and a half, he says in Isaiah 118, he says, Come, let us settle this. Even if your sin is as red as scarlet, I will make it as white as snow. God invites you to come and speak to him. Speak, put out, your, put out everything before him. And that's what happened to me that night. I was on my knees, praising God. and I, Not praising, begging God for mercy. I was begging him to, to save me. I don't want to go to hell because I was so scared to go to hell that night. Because I knew that I deserved to go to hell. Because of the life I was living without Christ. Dying without Christ that night, I would have been in hell. But you know what? 
I needed somebody that night that was bigger than death. I needed somebody that was able to tell death. Because death wanted to take me that all the right. I will say it again. But there was somebody that I needed that could say to death, leave him. Samaya. Futsak. Netsu. I needed the, the one who became who overcame. Was it right? Overcame, overcome death. wat die dood pas geraak het. Wat die duivel pas geraak het. I needed that one. You can believe, you watch this, you can listen to this, you can believe in who you want, and that one could, could, have, could have claimed they are God, and they were God, and uh, you will see their bones are still in the grave. But you must know, with the thing that you believe, I tell them always in prison, you can believe, you can trust, you put your trust in a snake, in Satan, you can do what you want. But when death comes, they always say in prison, donkey hack, thank you gate, that means open the gate for me, I want to go through. When death comes, and he knocks and it's time to go. The wages of sin is death. When death comes and he knocks, you need, it. You, uh, you need somebody. If you want to put your trust in money, you will get to a doctor and the doctor will say, sorry, I can do nothing for you. When you lie in a ventilator in a hospital and your breath is going and the doctors and everybody says, we did everything we know. If God doesn't help you now, there's no way that you're going to live and see tomorrow. That that you put your trust in. I have put my trust for a lot of years in power. And, in, in, and when I was a gangster, even when I was a policeman, I thought that I had. And we had a lot of power. But we misused it. So, that night, in my bedroom, when mercy came, running, when Jesus Christ came and said to the Father, Father, it's not his time. When Christ interceded for me, because what I did, the only thing I did is I called on the name of the Lord. And those who call on the name of the Lord shall and will be saved. So I deserve, by the life that I was living, as a criminal, as a very evil man, violent man, I deserve to be in hell. But God, but God's grace came for me. So I, I, I went to that prison with, and, and I said to him, Nikki, Nikki, God still sent, sent me here to tell you that he loves you. He started crying. I started crying. I walked out of that prison and I said to God, this is what I want to do the rest of my life. Since I was a little boy, they said that I will become a Springbok rugby player one day. I didn't become one because of choices I've made in my life. So what I want to say to you this morning, you listening and watching this and you sitting in this place with us, I want to say to you that when I said to that man that God loves him, the biggest sermon I ever preached in my life, and that's why it will always be my message. When we go into prisons, when we go into gang-infected areas, where we go, schools, we always tell them, we are here to tell you that God loves you and we love you. And that's what we want to share with you precious people sitting in front of us here and watching us and listening to us. We are, as a team want to tell you, if God can love us and if God can change us, and if God can use us, He can do that for any one of you. The only degree I almost had was I was almost on third degree. That's it. So the first guy I'm going to ask you, because I walked out of that prison and I was praying this and I was asking God, like I said, this is 20 years back. And by the grace of God, I'm still able to go into prisons, go to schools. We saw two weeks ago, three weeks ago, two weeks ago, how God did mighty, mighty things in Freyheit, in KZN, where over a thousand children stood up in a school, giving their lives to Christ. So, we truly believe that there is revival. It's time for revival. We truly believe that it's time to run with the gospel, with the fire of God. And what we, saw, we see on this mission trip, how our Father's heart is reconciliation. 
He wants people to reconcile with him. He wants people to reconcile with each other and also with themselves. Now, one of the guys, I'm the one that I'm going to introduce you first because I walked out of that prison and I was asking God and I was praying and I didn't know it, the perfect will of Father God for my life. I was born to bring the heaven to party. And there's only one way to get heaven to party, when a lost prodigal comes home. Heaven doesn't get excited over, over blind eyes that open and the lame walking. When a lost son and daughter wakes up, come to their senses in a big hole and comes home and say, Father, I've messed up. Amen. That gets heaven excited. So praise God. The first guy I'm going to introduce to you over the years, I met this young man a few years ago, uh, about two years ago. He was one of the later guys in a why I'm on a call, Brian First. Is he was like in the communities that we work in, and it's not just in the in the, in the brown communities, the colored communities. It is all over because crime doesn't ask what is the color of your skin. Crime is an act of Satan. It's a war between light and darkness. And because of what happened in his life, you will share it now with you. There was one thing in his life that I can just tell you. He had a role model. He will share with you, firstly, his, earthly, uh, uh, his father has a role model and what that father taught him and what he saw, his father did, what, and then he went to do it. And then he had another role model in the community. And our young children are looking up to the gangsters now, the drug lords, the guys with the bling blings, the money, the cars. And they say, ah, I want to become like them. them. They've got power. Nobody will mess with me if I'm part, part of this gang. So we've got in the Western Cape, especially in the Cape, Cape Flats area, they will share with you that young kids as from the age of eight, nine years old are being drawn into gangs. And they use these kids to go and kill other people to do that dirty work. Thank you, Brian. Hello. It's a nice place to stay in, to grow up in. My crime started when I was very young. Crime had started very young. I began to steal in the house. And this was this little, my first crime was I stole a pen and a pen. So it was either something. And with that pen and a pen, I buy alcohol. At that time it was, it was cheap. So it was three grand. I gin, drink it with my friends, and I must go home that night, and I know if I go home, I get the idea. So I lay in Cape Town, we came to the table on the left side, stayed there on the streets for maybe a week, and then come home and get the idea. At the age of eight years old, I stayed with my mother and father, ordered in the house, uh, and I see things in this house. Father was abusing my mother. They were drinking together. And uh, my father abused my mother, come to me from the middle way, a man for three, his girlfriend, or wife. And my mother decided, and father decided, okay, they're gonna depart that night from each other. As it worked out, my mother grabbed my brother. She told me, you must keep there by these people because I would come and fetch you. But I knew my spirit said, I would come and fetch you. It was my last night. And I decided that night not to sleep there by that place. It's a little church in the in the 10th Avenue. I didn't sleep there that night. I sleep somewhere outside. And the... Uh, something there. And that night about 11 and 12, I was awakened by people who screaming. And when I get up, see the place where I must be, I was supposed to sleep. It's burning. So the devil tried to kill me that time. 
but I just okay I was lucky went to my auntie stay there and as I grew up stay by my auntie I noticed one thing that my mother I'm not ashamed to say because I, she's also born again now she was the one praying me through and um, I noticed one thing I mentioned it last night by coach my mother's father died and my mother's she has a thing she's do, she was doing she was a shoplifter she was a shoplifter a very good shoplifter and I think there's prison come in because my mother went to prison not one time every time she went to prison and my mother's father died and I was watching my mother come out of prison in shackles and I was just standing there watching my mother and that's what my mother come out of prison to be by the funeral and then she went in the day so I was Looking at the people outside, seeing my role model as oh, these guys, they have a lot of money, man. And when they when they are speaking, people listening. So I think now I must I must get this guy this, this nice guys, man. This is nice role model. I must be like this guys. So I wanted to be a 26. I tried to be one of them. I think okay, if I'm gonna be a 26, then I have a license to do things I wanted to do and I decided I decided that time when I wanted to be one of the 26 I must join the other gang also so I joined the Americans so when you are American you're part of a team now part of a family a nice family now my brother gonna die with you I have your back but when sometimes when, oh, when the people come this is and you are alone. I have some scars, a battle scars. Oh, when people run away, they catch me. They must pay the price. And even there, God's hand was on my life, but I didn't know it. Even then, He kept me safe. Okay, they stabbed me, went to hospital. There was a time like. Oh, they take me for a target practice. There was a time when I was in hospital, out in England. This week it was this, uh, this lung, two weeks, and the other lung. Just, I just go to hospital every time because I want to be a gangster. And you know, I met the Lord in that falsy place Coach is talking about. That evil place, the Lord found me. He found me there. I never would have thought in my wildest dream that he would get me there. Um, I was always on the run, do many things. I'm gonna cut it short because why of time. Went to put or went to the court, they convict me. Sit in the court, they said, no, my brother, my mother, sir, you have done too many things. So we're gonna took you out of the, 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 the place outside, put you in the place we're gonna be safe because you are danger for yourself and for other people. And when the people when the judge said I sentence you to six years, somebody in the back said, Praise the Lord. It's my mother. How can a mother say praise the Lord and say something's wrong with this for this woman? And I didn't know, a week after that, it was my time. A week after that, I met, yo, it was like, I can't ex uh, explain you what happened that day, because I was like, going in the place, in the prison, you must look for your own thing. That's the other world. There is where they were the guys with the 26 or 27, you were like a, how can a workman? How can they say like you are you are you are doing their dirty work? Um, they would have lay in the bed and said, the man, bring me there. Come here, clean this, we must clean it. They are like the bosses in the prison. 
and you must be you must be obedient because you want to be one like you want to be like this most be like them you want to become like them the numbers most she better do everything it's nice most but i didn't know i didn't know when i first wanted to be like them i didn't know when you're in there you know it's like a death trap they lie to you everything you bring into prison your mother bring for you it's not yours it's not your belongings you just kept it there are other people it goes to that person to that person to that person and it come there by the big shot he's the one he's eating the cream your smoke is not yours they will tell you when to smoke they will tell you when to go to prison they will they will tell you when to go to prison and what happened is what happened is i decided yo i'm in a death trap now look here they told me it's nice now to be a number it's nice that is the lie they told you but when you into something is when you get into a marriage no it's going to be this lady's mine she oh, she's no but when you love what you see yo oh, it's not like she uh, it's not like she told me she's like yo your feet is stinking are you it's like this man but when you went into prison you you thought now you're going to be nice was you were the owens but when you come there it's like oh it's bad it's slavery i will never tell even my best enemy to go to prison because it's bad no no what like i'm saying is when i met when the lord get hold of me in prison it was like yo yeah, he rip out the heart of stone and he put in the other heart Amen. heart of flesh yeah everything changes my speak changes you see you almost english now <laughs> yeah good now yeah it's english now i never thought and you know the places i go now if i was still busy with my stuff i'll never made it i lost a lot of friends a lot of friends died before me my best friends they were killed die by the gun die by tuck drugs but mercy found me mercy found me and today i'm standing here to tell somebody else that day when i was born again it was the best day in my life and today i can tell other people that there's hope maybe you think today my child don't like me anymore me and my mother have the same relationship we have the same relationship i thought yeah this one is drinking a lot my mother was laying there drink drunk but she was the one who prayed me through she was coming she's come to my father's to my grandmother's father's funeral with shackles Yo, it was just crazy, man. How can you come like this? And my father, he rubbed something off on me, telling, um, um, eating my mother. So I was also doing that. So I needed to change. But everybody said, he will never. Yo, him, never. In life. Him, no. But they never used the word, maybe he wanted to. They always said he'll never. He, the, the sea will never even wash him clean. But they never thought of the word. Maybe he wanted to. Inside, I was screaming out for help, but people didn't see it. They just see this guy robbing people, stealing people, killing people. And when when you're when you're in the gangs, you need to do all that. You must be a killer also. You must be a rapist also. Gang rape. Why I'm telling you this? Sometimes people look people from the outside, but from the inside, I'm just that little boy seeing my father hit my mother, seeing my mother come with shackles, 
Maybe that gives me a, a kick. Hey, it's nice. That's a nice thing. But to them telling somebody about somebody who can change anybody, God said. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. He's been saved now for over? No, it was 2,000. 2,000. Jesus Christ saved him in Paul's prison, eh? So for oh, almost 21 years, 20 years, never been back to prison. As far as I know, he never stole from somebody again. Mm. Mm. Never. Never. Asked the Lord for a young wife. Got a young wife. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For over 18 years, they're going to be married in December. 15 years, 15 years. 15 years, sorry, I'm 18 years. And the same Jesus that changed my life, whose mercy rewrote my life, is the same Jesus who did it for him. You see, Jesus Christ, the gospel, and the word of God is the best rehabilitation program. It's the only answer for crime. It's the only answer for corruption. It's the only answer for the problems of South Africa is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That I mean, we are not ashamed of this gospel Hallelujah. because it's the power of God unto salvation for everybody who believes. Doesn't matter what is the color of your skin. There was no way 20, 20 21 years back that we could have been like this. No, 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 no. But Jesus Christ made us one. Amen. Thank you, brother. Now I'm going to invite the one that was the one who he did the dirty work for in the prison. The main guy on top of the gangs. You know, South Africa's gangs are rated as the most violent prison gangs in the world. Now you get your prison gangs, they are called the 26s, the 27s, 28s. And there's a different other ones, Air Force. and But these three, now this guy, it was his dream to become the top guy. Like they will say, the top dog, the Madota. Let's give a hand to uh, John Beakers. My brother, this is not that camera of ours that you can run around. I need to put your fussies on. Yeah. Praise be to God. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I believe God saved me for this day. I believe that God has a purpose in my life. To tell somebody this morning, irrespective of where you are today, God is able to save you. God is able to do in your life which you never imagined. If you were to tell me 15 years ago, I would be saved, I would be called a man of God. Then I would say, you, you crazy. You drank something beyond this world. Because I believed in the power of the number. I never believed in Christ. My mother was saved for as long as I can remember. And I, when she, when she prayed for me at night, I would tap her on the shoulder and tell her, please don't pray for me. Because I don't believe in this God you're serving. I need to see. I need to really, I need, I need to see God before I can believe in this God you, you're talking about. And you know, at the young, tender age of 14 years old, I saw, I saw the 26ers. And they the guys with the money. They, the guys with the gold rings and chains, oh, the clothes were nice. And the thing that I saw, they got the best of women. So I wanted to be someone like that. And then 14 years old, I, I ran away from home. And um, I was born into a family where, where, where all were smugglers. Everybody sold drugs. 
in my family and I I went to my uncle and I just started uh, selling drugs 16 years old I went to prison for the first time and um, what we did we pulled an armed robbery and um, we were captured and sent to prison I was a juvenile still at that time but um, they couldn't punish me the, the court the court couldn't sentence me at that time because of being a juvenile and I went to the to, to prison for two years oh yara di yara gaat my nou rere gehaap nee die yara gaat my help nee asjeblief vir jy kan man asjeblief op 16 jare geoude doen kom ek by die tronk aan baie gevaarlike plek pols my maximum a place not for a human being but my name, I, I, I had this nickname Ringo and everybody was excited about this young guy bloodthirsty and um, there was nothing there was nothing that in my path could stand nothing, next I believed that I could if I could become a 26 that I could I could make a difference in my community I went to prison 16 years old I first got out of prison when I was 27 years old I only got a five-year sentence but on that ek, the, the gang rejoined it I had to prolong my sentence and every time it was time for me to discharge I decided that I was I was going to go on with the number because I climbed the ladder of the 26's and I became one of the top dogs where I could give I could mense instructeer what om te doen. I could mense beheer. When I came out, I was part of the Americans, and that was hell. That was hell because now I had to, I had to prove myself to the number, and I had to prove myself to the Americans. My old youth, I said it all the time. Correctieve dienste het my groot gemaak. En hulle het my baie min kos gegeneet, milies. Ek het geweeg vir, 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 vir my hele lewe lang het ek geweeg 37 kilogram. At the age of 42 years, I still weighed 37 kilograms. Die boer het my te min kos gegeen. And liquor is all sorts of drugs. Because now I was hooked on drugs. I sold drugs. It was just, but for me it was a roller coaster at that time. I believe that I was the top man. Ek moes hoeveel keer ek sit vir oogend in die voordag, sit ek in die jyre, wees my, dat ek moes soveel keer dood gewees het. And I believe that was my name that kept me alive, it was my name that the people feared, but it was not that, it was the grace of God that kept me into this life. And vir oogend vir die eerste keer, Wees sê jyre my dat ek skeel een aan te kar en met sal spleng en ek reim met die kar, ek moet in pa goed kom die polis begin my van Pilfran, van Lippie af begin die polis my achtervolg 
Hij zei, wow, wow, wow. Nee, wat, dat is lekker voor mij. Hij had klap om zo lekker diepen. Tjoe. You know what? I drove into the busy lane, Ottery Road. And, and it was, there was a circle. Ik had net vast in die klomp gravel ingerij. En ik gravel kom uit en ik was uit die kar uit. En as I ran, they shot at me. Hulle skiet my om, daar leek. Kan nie hard loopie. You know what the people said? The nurses said when, when, when they took me to, to an overpark, um, to an overpark uh, day hospital, but it ran 24 hours. And this, this was in the early hours of the morning. And, 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 and the nurses said, Zij is gelukkig. And they said, uh, they said, you are lucky because these guys, they shoot you dead. You're my brother. I'll kill you, you. They kill you. And they said, you are the luckiest guy because only last week, two people died. And for ochend, we see Jeremy, that that was he gelukkig. That was he. That was he my name, what by a keer myself a divinity. And he revised me in the keer, where I do it must have been. But I thought, nah, my name is Ringo, and people fear the Ringo. But God's mercy, say grace. I can understand today that as it is for the Lord was he, then was I for a moment here as a witness. My ma op a stadium. My ma sê vir my, Ringo, hoor gauw jy. Ek is dier mekaar. Mense is bang. Niemand wil in my geselskap visie. En my ma roep my en sy sê vir my, Ringo, sy sê vir jou, moes ek by jou geboorte, moes ek jou doodgemaak het. Want sy sal nooit kan rechtkom jy. You will never Sy sê die sevende brame, die ou mens het lilleke goed gesê. Sy sê die sevende brame kan jou nie in skoon was nie. Want sy is lillek. Only had one brother. Ek het net een broer gehad. Hy was 28 en ek was 26. As ons by mekaar uitkom, is het een bloedbad. And one day we decided that one of us must leave this world. Ons het mekaar moet draad vastgemaak, vreek, moet draad vastgemaak. En eerst in een mes in ons begin steek. Al te weet in die hospital beland. Maar die Heere, die Heere, het in my swakheid, in my ongerechtigheid het die Heere aan my gedink en het herken vandag vir die tyd soos die. Ek dink vir myself, ek moet, ek moet, want ek voel ek gaat, ek, my tyd is nabie, dat dat, daar is niemand wat die van my ken nie. As ek kom, dan gaan die antie so lang die bek wegstiek Dag is het lekker en is nice. Ek is in die kerke, ek is in die mense sy huise, hulle stiek jy my hulle goed weg nie. As ek net nader gekom het, my gezicht luid kok so, ek het nou die dag vir iemand gesê in die winkel, asjeblief moet die mens kry die mense in die winkels, wat as hy in die winkel instap, hulle loop hulle al achter jou. Hulle is net so rondom jou. Toe sê ek nou die dag nie, ek is klaar, my hand is gezond jong, ek moet jy hoef jy nou my achter my te stap jy. Want die Heer het my gehelp. Dit raak so erg in my leven dat die gangsters wil ook nie meer na by my visie. Dit raak erg. Ek was die worst 
of worst. Want toe hulle hoop opgee, sit hulle my naam op een lys, dat ek moet sterf. Jou eie mense moet jou uitdaal, want jy raak vir hulle ook een gevaar. As hulle in die nacht daar oor die land kom, in die groot TV's en goed, hulle daar by die wit mense gesteel, dan vraag die een die aan die en waar gaan sy goed verkoop? Hy sê nie, hy gaat hier om. Hy sê, moet nie daar die gaan nie, want Ringo wacht vir jou daar. Die skelm, sê vir die ander skelm, moet nie daar die gaan nie, want die skelm is baie skelm. En toe ek op die vlak kom, wat ek sien die manne, as ek nou versichtig, toe weet ek nie, my handel is my laatste. Ek sal iets aan die saak moet doen. En ek sê vir myself, ek gaat maar trouw, ek gaat maar manier wees om uit die gang te kom, uit die nommer uit te kom, ek gaat na manier wees om op te hou smokke, ek gaat maar vrou vat en trouw. Ek het amper gedink ek het die verkeerde vrou gevat nie. Want ek ontmoet een jong vrou, en ons twee begin met hierdie verhouding, Haar mense sê, die ding is hier echt nie los om. Ek ga jou doodmaak. My mense sê, vir haar, nie, wat wil die moet die jong hee? Met vijf kinders. En die moet weet by wat te plek is ek. Van die vijf kinders het ek nog nie een dag gesorg nie. Maar ek is een myn ouwe buiten. Ek is een man wat mense vrees he maar ek kan nie een paar van my kinders wees hier. En ons trouw, ongeacht wat die mense sê, besluit ons dat ons gaan trouw. En vir die eerste vijf jaar van hy, van hy huwelik, was het een bloedbad. Ek praat van een dagelijkse bloedbad. Ek het demone in my, wat vir my sê, ek moet vir haar doodmaak. Sy swanger moet ons tweede kind, en die demoon sê, sy moet haar doodmaak, want hy is nie jou kind nie, sy is van twee ander mans, is sy swanger. En ek glo dit. Ek maak drie ansla op haar leven, wat ek die kind uit haar mag het, wil verweider. Waar het by die derde keer kom, Toe besef ek, dat die hand van die Heere, iets is bezig met my. Want vir drie keer, misluk my pogings, om my kind uit haar mag uit te kry. En finaal, toe besluit ek dat, jong, ek moet my maar net oorgie. Kort na dit, by my derde aanslag, ek moet maar nou vinnig haar kloop, ek kan nie nou daar ingaan, van elke keer wat ek probeer het nie. Maar toe het by die derde keer kom, word ek weer toegesluit. Ek kom in een politiesel aan, waar die manne, toe ek instap in die sel, toe krimp, hulle so die groot lang ouwens, begin krimp, toe die klein man instap. Want nou weet hulle, moet hulle hulle geld, hulle besittings, alles wat waardevol is, moet hulle maar bring. En Brian sal sê, die man is al getuig daar. Hy gaf vir jou swaarder wees, as jou my self bring, as ek om by jou gaan uithaal, hy gaan het baie swaar wees. Hy kom daar vir jou ka. En vir die eerste keer in my leven gaan my oor op. Ek is 42 jaar oud. Is een man, is een man wat in my plek bly, in my omgeving bly, as een moeslim man, nou kijk wie gebruik die jyre, hy gebruik so maar iemand, wat hy nooit aan sal dinkie. Hy vraag vir my, nadat al die tronkse goed is, dat hy goed klaar is, vraag hy vir my, Ringo, vir wat is jy nou weer hier? Ek sê vir hom, jyre, my broer, ek het al weer, daar by die huis man, en die vrou, het een saak gemaakt. Hehe, Hy sê vir my, hy sê vir my, 
Hij zei, Ringo, laat ik jou vandaag zien. Zien dingen. Ik heb om, ik het om die detail gegeven van wat elke keer gebeurt. Want elke naviek is ik een verschillende politieel toegesloten. En hij zei van mij: moet niet dingen. Moet niet laat mensen van jou dingen laten zien. Wat de helft van jou wil laten zien. Zien het van jouzelf af. Uit jouw oogpunt. Hij zei van mij: ik heb één antwoord voor jou. Hij zei: Love conquers all. En de politie al zei iemand van mij dat die liefde oorwin alles. Ik heb uit die cel het gestap. I'm telling you, it was my last time. Dat was my last keer wat die politie mij ooit kan toegesluit het. Want toen hij schillen van my oor afval, toe hy, toe hy weke later, toe gee ek myself oor vir die jaren. Die hele gemeenskap sê nie, hy is die bekeer die man. Ah, die jonge skelm, hoe kan hy vir hom bekeer? Hulle sê nie, hy het gesien, hy kijk het geld, hy gaan hy geld steel, hy loop hy weg. Ek hoef hy sê, 15 jaar later, ek het nog nie weer gevat die. Ek het nog niemand aangerand die. Vandag, hy is die halve gemeenskap wat gesê, hy sal nooit recht kom nie. Dit is hulle wat vandag aan my dier klop. Hulle vraag broer, wil dit die goed put vir my nie, my hewelik is dier mekaar. Hulle vraag broer, my kind is siek, wil sy toch maar nie. Hulle klop aan my dier, wanneer die gangsters mekaar doodskiet, dan kom klop hulle aan die selfde dier. Hulle vraag nou pastoor, wil dit toch nie my kind begrawe nie. As ek net kon weet, as ek net kon weet, wat die Heere in staat is om te kan doen. Nou moet jy weet, ek het het genoem aan die begin, ek het amper gedink, ek het die verkeerde vrou gevat, because sy was in een moeslim, in een moeslim familie geboren, sy was moeslim groot gemaakt, die enigste ding wat sy geken het was vir alle, Ek sê, na die zondagochtend, die maandag, maandagochtend toe ek wakker skrik, vraag jy nie voordag, ek vraag jyre, wat moet ek, hier is twee kinders geboren en die hevelik, wat moet ek nou met die goed doen? Ek is, ek, ek, ek noem het snaaks, ek noem het snaaks, want as die waarde, dis hoe ek met die jyre gepraat het, toe ek met die jyre aankom, toe sê ek rou, ek weet nie hoe my mens te kan wees nie, ek weet nie eens hoe om recht te kan praat nie, ek het al vergeet hoe om het is om te bid. En die jyre sê my in een menselike stem, hy sê vir my, luister, stel jy net die voorbeeld vir hulle, hoe om my te dien, ek sê jyre, hoe de jou, ek weet nie eens hoe die, ek het nog nooit in jou gegloe nie, hoe kan ek aan die mense kom leer, en God sê, laat my heilige geest toe, om jou te leer, om jou te leer, en ek het stil kom word voor die jyre, en ek het begin dien, want die jyre sê, in drie maanden sy tyd, en red ek jou jylle huishouding, een smokkelhuis, een draghuis, een plek waar ek bloed getuig tegen die mire, maar die Heere sê, in drie maanden, gaan ek jou wees, red ek hulle siele, elke week, as ek kerk toe gaan, op een zondag oogend, dan vraag ek, sister, wil die toch maar nie saam kerk toe gaan, sy sê nie, broe, sy is bekeer, en ek is slams, Maar die ergste van dit is, ek het haar nog bekend verstel aan die tuk lolly. Ek het haar geleer hoe om die goedes te gebruik. En dit maak het vir my nog moeiliker as een mens dat ek vir haar in die keer kan kry. Kom ek sê vir jy, week na week kom ek, ek hoor net die selfde story. Ek raak mis moedig het jy al opgelet in jy persoonlijke lewe, dat is net op die laaste minuut, wat God vir jou deelkom, wanneer jy dink het sal nooit weer, kan gebeur jy, het gaan nie werk jy, die laaste moment, daar kom jy jyre vir jou deel, 
Op je laatste zondag van die Heere man. Ik zal nou mijn moeder gevraagd. Ik, ik wil een plekje volgen. Vraag niet. Maar, maar ik, ik, ik vraag maar zuster. Ik zuster nog toe sê sê. Broe kan je dan niet zien. Ik is aangetrek voor die kerkje. Ik ja. wil nog vragen aan die kinders. Ze sê, sê broe kijk naar die kinders. Oeh hier kijk een prachtige ding. Weet je hoe slam ze zet kerkrokjes aan. Nee. Als Apira, als Wazira en als Tazima en we stap daar is zo'n dag ogen, stap ons kerk toe. Daar is een bezoekende volk, dus ons voor ogen die bezoek. Als een bezoekende volk, wat haar, wat haar bedien voor die ogen. En, 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 en zuster Soraya, zuster Soraya gia getegen is, en, en, en toen zuster Soraya klaar getegen, toen zuster Nazima op haar knie koppen, en ze het met tranen wat ik daar uit kom, want ze gewaarde die jaren, hij redt jou die moeslims, halleluja. Hij ochtend gie ze haar zelf, ze gie haar leven voor die jaren. En I'm telling you today, Ever since that morning, our lives has never been the same again. Oh, Kwanam Danki. Oh, Jesus. And what for you say for God? Dat je omstandigheid voor eens misschien dat hij. Die, 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 die twijfel dat die Heer dat kan doen. Maar ik zeg voor je volgende. Alles is moeilijk. En Christus is het volgende. O oh, Heer, dank je. Ik wil voor je zeggen, ik het gevraagd voor de Heer, die mij in doen. Ik vraag je Heer. Dat ik in mijn huis met die Heer dien. En today, ons wat die schijn van die aarde was, is vandaag die roem van ons gemeenschap. Alle wil vandaag bij ons wees. Ons het het gehad wat ons mens van ons af wegstuurt. Maar die Heer het aan ons gegeven vandaag om mensen naar ons toe te trekken. Ik heb gedacht het was die verkeerde kiezen van een vrouw. Maar vandaag staan ik hier deel van jullie baas van. Met die zinnen van mijn vrouw wat achter mijn rug put. En hier vertrouw dat ons vervangst vandaag voor die koning groot en geweldig zou wees. Als hier iemand volgend heeft. Wat die jaren vol aan je steekt met je hand op. Dank je, Heer, dank je. Dank je, Vader, dank je. Dank je, Lord, dank je. Ik zie niet aan de Heer, ik zie niet aan de Heer. Ik ken je leven voor ogen. En hij is in staat voor ogen om je verandering te kunnen maken. Ik wil voor je zeggen, ik wil voor je zeggen een closing voor ogen. That if you commit yourself to the Lord this morning and allow God to have his way in your life, I will guarantee you this, that your life will never be the same again. I can't even wait to me here to do it. My wife, who is a Muslim community, I can't even wait to me here to do it. Iemand het zelf gekomen om voor mij te zeggen, broer, hoe, het is maar een mooie bekeer, jong, het is, is, is prachtig. Maar kom, ik, ik ga voor jou betalen, ik ga voor jou bijbelskoel te stuur. Maar hier was bij mij en hier had mij gezegd, hij zei van mij, allow no man to teach you. Als je volgend die hier in je leven toelaat, moet niet toelaat dat de mens voor jou leer. He. Maar laat die heilige geest volgend voor jou leer zodat hij vandaag niet die guns net van die mens moet krijgen, maar dat die guns van die hemel op jouw leven, op jouw schouders kan rusten vandaag. 
en ons op ons voeten staan. Ons wat ons handen opgesteek het vir oogend. En bid saam met my hierdie eenvoudige gebed vir oogend. Ek dink ek het die, ek het die gegloe dat een eenvoudige gebed kan my jylle lewe verander nie. It was just this prayer that turned my life around. Father, I come for a moment. I dare come for a moment that I can stand there. Help me for more, and for more my stand alas, by it I can lose. Was my vermoor in die bloed van die lam en vergewe my vir oogend van al my sondes en my ongerechtigheid. Leer my, wees my om vir jy kind te kan wees. Ek herken vir oogend dat Christus Jesus jy sien is. Hy het die kruis dood gesterf en hy het hier die derde dag opgestaan. Ek herken vir oogend dat ek niks sonder jy kan wees. Daarom nooi ek jy in my hart in my leven dat jy vir oogend totaal beheer van my sal kom neem dankie dat ek weet vanmorgen dat ek een kind van God kan wees dat die wereld sal kan sien dat die liefde uit my het straal dankie jyre dat die my nou in gerechtigheid my sondes van my verweider so ver van die ooste na die weste sal wees en jy nooit weer aan sal dinkie in Jesus naam dankie dat ek vir oogend jy kind kan wees en dankie dat jy vanmorgen vir my jy vader is dankie jyre dat van nou af jy my leven bestuur in Jesus machtige naam vader ek bid vanmorgen om oor hierdie volk Ek bid oor elkeen wat vir oogend halleluja Jyre my stem kan hoor Dat vanmorgen hierdie boodskap gehoor het liewe Jyre Ek wil bid Jyre dat jy elke vloek wat oor hulle levens gesprek het Dat jy dit nou verweider in Jesus naam Ek bid Jyre dat elke ding wat in hulle bloedlijn le Dat jy dit nou terugstuur halleluja En jyre sal sy woonplek wees Jyre ek bid en ek maak hulle vry volgend halleluja en dat net Christus in hulle gesien sal word in Jesus machtige naam en die volk sê saam amen en amen dankie paas alleen